what is up everyone here again today i got my 2014 macbook air um, i have featured this in the previous two videos in my last video i actually said that i am going to be running windows on this but <laughs> scratch that i've decided to wipe mac os and windows off of this thing and i'm going to be purely running linux mint on this so one of my comments suggested that I should try Linux on this MacBook, and I always have wanted to try Linux, but I've always been kind of a Linux noob. Um, so Linux Mint is just one of the many distributions of Linux. Um, this is based on Ubuntu. So this is meant to be an out-of-the-box operating system that is free and ready to use. Linux Mint and just Linux in general are notorious for reviving old devices. So you can see the minimum requirements for this is two gigabytes of RAM um, and four gigabytes for actually for a recommended comfortable usage. So that's perfect for what I got here. I got a MacBook Air with four gigabytes of RAM. So we're gonna see how this goes. So as I started to research this, I did learn there's three different versions of Mint. There's Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Cinnamon is going to be the most fully featured, and then Mate, XFCE are more lightweight as you go down, with XFCE being the most lightweight. Um, so I did decide to go with Cinnamon on this since it was fine with 4GB of RAM, and that's exactly what I got. So I'm going to walk you guys through this process step by step exactly how it went for me. If I have any issues or anything, I'll let you guys know about that. Um, as I told you before, I did decide to wipe Mac OS and Windows off this computer just to have Linux on it. Um, so the first step is to use this program called Balina Etcher so that we can get to flashing an ISO onto a flash drive so that we can boot from that and then we can install Linux. And real quick, I just wanted to mention, if I sound a little weird, I do apologize. I'm just going to over sickness. Um, but anyway, here, what I'm doing right now is uh, actually flashing a USB with a Big Sur recovery file. Um, so that if worse comes worse and I need to reinstall macOS, I can do it easily. Um, because the internet recovery for macOS can be a nightmare. So I figure it's best to just have a backup plan just in case. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. It did take a very long time. I time last time lapses at about 350 percent so if yours is taking a long time don't be concerned um, but this is what the screen's going to look like the first time you plug in your usb and boot from it i did have to choose the compatibility mode because um, the first one wasn't working for me um, so that's what i would recommend choosing the first time you boot into it it's going to take a little minute and then you should see it doing some doing some things So it's going to do its Linux things for a little while until you finally will see a little Linux Mint logo pop up. Um, and then it's going to take you into the test, kind of boot from the USB area where you can kind of play with it, see how it runs. It will run a little bit slower since it's running from the USB, um, but it does give you a chance to kind of see it before you install it. So mine has finally booted up into this test environment. Um, up in the top left corner you should see a little thing that says install Linux Mint. So that's where you're going to go to actually permanently install the operating system. Um, so I'm just kind of going through that process here, answering all the questions, keyboard layout. I did not install the multimedia codex, I don't think it's necessary. Um, installation type, as I told you guys, I am installing it fully onto my computer with no other operating systems. Time zone, all that fun stuff, all my login information, blah, blah, blah. And then it's just going to do its thing. It's going to give you a little slideshow and it's going to install. Um, so we will be back once that's done. Um, so the full installation took about 17 minutes, so nothing too crazy. Once it finishes, it's going to prompt you to do a restart. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, once you do the restart, you're going to see all this weird stuff popping up all over the place. Um, I did find that I actually had to hold the power button and restarted myself manually because this just kept going on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever um, so I went ahead and just powered it down the hard way and then we will boot back up okay I did a hard restart we're gonna start this baby back up here 
Um, so this is what your first boot is going to look like. First thing you should see, you might see a little bit of text up in the left corner, um, but then you are going to see your Linux Mint logo pop up here, which I'm going to try to zoom in on, but my camera does not like it. and I'm in I'm gonna go ahead and enter that password that I made during the setup um, and then it's gonna take me straight to my desktop for the very first time the one that is fully mine um, but go ahead and keep that USB plugged in because we do have to do the Wi-Fi drivers and it does require for the USB to be plugged in for that um, so I'm just kind of testing that all my brightness button works for my keyboard brightness my screen brightness and they all work um, so now I'm gonna go into my settings and then I'm going to go all the way down to device manager, driver manager, pardon me, I'm sorry, driver manager. Um, you do have to hit mount installation media and then it will find your Wi-Fi driver that way. This is how it worked for me. Some people said they had to use Ethernet or uh, tether their Android phone. I personally just had to keep the USB plugged in and then my computer actually found the Wi-Fi driver and I just had to click install. Um, so that's what I would recommend. There are other ways you may have to Google, but this is how it worked for me. Once you get that Wi-Fi driver installed, you should see up in the top right corner that Linux is going to notify you that Wi-Fi network is available. That's how you know that it has been installed successfully. So now you can go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi. Um, but before you are able to connect, it is going to have you do one more restart just to get the Wi-Fi drivers enabled. Um, but once you do that, you should be able to get in and then connect to your Wi-Fi once you log back in. And that's really about it. I did get a few pieces of software um, to help with the MacBook fans and also to help with battery life on the laptop. Um, but that's about it. It was a pretty easy installation. Um, this is what it's currently looking like now that I've got everything set up how I want it. Um, I'll leave a link to the YouTube video that I followed to get this theme set up in the description. Um, but yeah, it has been running amazingly. I'm actually kind of blown away at how much life it has brought back to this old MacBook. Like, everything is snappy. Like, I thought it was good with Windows, but even compared to Windows, it, this just blows it completely out of the water. This has been like a real breath of fresh air for this MacBook. Um, so if you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave them down below. I'm very excited to get to know Linux more and more as I use this laptop. So I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.